Hello and welcome to another tutorial from Imagine Landscapes. This is the first tutorial for the nice to gnome you gnome. Uh, for those of you watching it as a mystery knit along um, and not knowing what it's going to look like in the end, welcome to the excitement. This is super fun. I hope that uh, finding out we're going to be holding the yarns held double was a good first surprise. And we are going to now do some short rows. And I just wanted to demystify the process because um, I don't like it when people freak out and feel unsure. And I want to hold your hand every step of the way. So I have marked the beginning of my round here. That's also where the tails come off, but I wanted to make it extra clear. Then I've knit 16, just like it says in round two. So we are on the knit side of the fabric. Uh, well, I guess I should call it the right side of the fabric since we purled to start, but we're gonna be making garter. And so we are on the right side of the garment um, and we are doing knit stitches. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring the yarn to the front. We're going to slip the next stitch and bring the yarn to the back. Now I knit continental, so that's what that looks like continental. But if you knit English or if you are a thrower, that would look more like, let me see. All right, so I have the yarn. It would be behind because we'd be knitting. So I'd bring it to the front. I would slip the next stitch. I would bring it around and behind. No matter how you're doing it, what we're doing when we're slipping the stitch with that yarn brought to the front is we're kind of wrapping it, uh, almost giving it a scarf. Then we return it to the left needle tip and we turn our work. All right, so we've literally wrapped a stitch and then turned it. From this side, it looks like this. So we knit 16 back. And what that does is it gives us garter stitch on the right side and the wrong side, I guess. Uh, and when we hit the beginning of the row or round, that's where we switch and we're going to stop knitting. So we've wrapped and turned Now we're knitting back and that's given us garter stitch. Here we are at the beginning of the round and it tells us to purl 16 and that's because we're on we're crossing the beginning of the round and so right here you can see that if I were to knit I would get uh, I would get stockinette rather than garter stitch I've been trying to think of how to make this really simple and clear to help you guys and not freak you out but I think um, I might be uh, over overstating this basically we're going to be kind of rocking back and forth over the beginning of the round marker. And when we're on one side of the beginning of the round marker, we have to purl everything to get garter. And when we're on the other side of the beginning of the round marker, we have to knit everything to get garter. As we work these short rows, we will be spacing them farther and farther out. So we will be getting more and more unworked stitches in the center as we rock back and forth. This first go at this. There will be only one unwrapped stitch in the round or unworked stitch. So let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. All right. So we've purled 16. Now it's time to wrap and turn purl wise. So it's kind of the same <laughs> except what we do afterwards. We need to get the yarn to the front so that we can slip the stitch, bring the yarn to the back, return the stitch, and turn it. We would then keep the yarn in front and purl. That's the really the difference between wrap and turn knit and wrap and turn purl is that if we're purling we need it to stay in front so we can purl whereas if we're knitting we need to get the yarn to the back so we can knit. So the the wrapping part happens the same. So for those of you who are continental knitters you've seen that style. Let's just quick do a thing for the throwers. All right, so I have, all right, so I have purled. Now I need to, the yarn's at the front. I slip, I come around, I, I wrap, now I turn, and then I just get ready to purl that next stitch. So wrap and turn really isn't um, 
complicated and um, there's going to be an extra trick because we are working with garter uh, it's going to be even easier to work wrap and turns and short rows than it would be in stockinette so i'm just going to go back to continental just because um, i want to be able to do this with uh, some vent semblance of competency in front of you guys so i'm purling again i'm going to purl all the way back to the beginning of the round and then that's round two uh, I went back and forth with my tech editor over to what call these because they're not rounds. They're also not really rows. So um, I just want you to know <laughs> that um, we're going to be kind of rocking to one side, coming back to the, the beginning of row, rocking to the other side, coming back to the beginning of the row. Then you can take a deep breath and start the next set of short row uh, wrap and turn workings. So. I'm going to put this down so that we can see what's happening here. We have got our beginning of row. So we knit around here, we wrapped and turned, knit to here. Then we purled around to here, wrapped and turned, purled back. So you can see we've got garter all the way around. And here is the stitch that we neither wrapped nor turned <laughs> on either one of those. So we cast on 35 and then we worked 16 and 16 plus the two we wrapped and turned. So that gets us to 35. If it helps you, you may want to put a little removable stitch marker on this center one. And as we work, we will be increasing. So the next time we're only going to work to, sorry, we're only going to work 15, then wrap and turn this one. Then the next time we would wrap and we would work 14 and wrap and turn this one. Then we would work here and wrap and turn this one. So the number of unworked stitches is going to be growing around this center stitch. This one will never be worked. This one will be, these will be wrapped and turned on the first row, round two. Then round three, we will wrap and turn on these and then these, and it will grow out from there. I hope that you found this demystifying and helpful. Go ahead and keep going. The gnome, I promise, is in nice, manageable bite-sized chunks, and um, I'm pretty sure you're gonna love Nikki just as much as I do. So this has been a tutorial from Imagine Landscapes Designs. If you need more help, come to the Ravelry forums for uh, some help. You can go to the Imagine Landscape group where we have an active and awesome community hoping to help you with your gnomes. So happy knitting and happy gnoming.